and welcome to Love Muslims Critique Islam Part 4, uh, Muhammad. Throughout this series of videos, we'll be sharing with you the truth of Islam that you just won't get in the mainstream media and you won't get from Muslims. So let me reveal to you the secrets Imams don't want you to know and take you on a journey of absolute truth. So what do we know uh, about Muhammad? First of all, uh, well, he was born in uh, 570 AD. Uh, his father was uh, Abdul uh, Mutalib. He died before he was born. And uh, his mother, Amna Beit Wa, uh, died six years later. Uh, he was then brought up by his uncle, uh, Abu Talib, uh, after his grandfather died uh, who had raised him for, for two years. He was married at the age of 25 to his first wife, Khadija, uh, who was 15 years older than Muhammad. Uh, she was a successful businesswoman in her own right, which is important to note because these were pre-Islamic days. Um, it would be fair also to note that given his mother died when Muhammad was so young, uh, he may have seen Khadija as a matriarch and as his employer, uh, she was also his boss. And certainly her freedoms were more evident uh, without the restrictions that Muslim women experience today in Islam uh, and up until she died, uh, Khadija was uh, Muhammad's only wife. Uh, after she died, age 65, his attitude to women seemed to have changed and women's rights then became curtailed and he went on to become uh, a polygamist and married another 11 women. Being now a, a rich man and a man of leisure, he would spend a lot of his time uh, in meditating in caves. Um, in 610 AD, whilst meditating in the Hira cave, uh, he had a visit from an angel, Angel Gibral. Uh, we think that could well be Gabriel, um, who told him to read and write down Allah's revelations for the Holy Quran. Um, but the problem was, Muhammad was illiterate and uh, he couldn't, he couldn't obey him. Uh, three times the angel asked him, and three times Muhammad said, No, I can't. So uh, you would have thought the angel would have known that, wouldn't you? After this experience, he then went to Khadija, uh, told her the story and asked for her opinion. She sat him on one knee and got him to recite the story and repeat it while sitting on the other knee. Then, perhaps as a test of concentration and accuracy of the story, uh, she took all her clothes off and stood before him naked and asked him once more. Um, she then went to her cousin, uh, a Christian historian, uh, presumably with her clothes on, I think, and uh, asked for his opinion. And he then confirms that, yes, he must have indeed seen an angel. And yes, Muhammad must be therefore a prophet. And so uh, ironically, Islam, the greatest tormentor of Christianity, was kick-started with the help of a Christian. So what happens next? Well, um, he continues to get these revelations um, over the next 12 years. Uh, and then one night he got a, a visit from Gibral again and who told him to fly on a horse to Jerusalem uh, to where the Dome of the Rock is now. And uh, so that's the reason uh, why this particular site is, is so important to Muslims, uh, so it's because of this myth. Um, he was then told to fly up to the seven heavens uh, where he met Allah, uh, who told him to go back and pray 50 times a day. Uh, and as he comes down the heavens, uh, he bumps into Moses, who says, 50 times? Oh, that's far too much. Go up and get that figure reduced. So eventually he does this and he comes back down and says, well, Allah says five times and Allah, Moses says, yeah, that's great. Well done. Go ahead. In 622 AD, he then went to Medina from Mecca and received more revelations over the next 10 years. And it's these revelations that are called the Medinan revelations. 
and he kind of transforms himself from a peaceful preacher, a relatively peaceful preacher, to a powerful warlord. Now, up until 632, he uh, went on a rampage of sacking, robbing, killing, raping, and sharing his booty with his men. And this is what made him so popular, um, and they become prepared to follow a man who delivered them not only victory after victory, but got them richer and richer in the process. Uh, so this is how he could expand his following so quickly and become so popular with his men. Um, not sure about being popular with women though, uh, as women were captured were, and kept as uh, concubines or sex slaves for his followers uh, if he didn't want to marry them. And captured men, on the other hand, were not so lucky, they were slaughtered. Uh, in Medina, he fought local Jewish tribes, uh, slaughtering them when they wouldn't accept him as their prophet, um, not having matched their criteria for one. And in uh, 632, um, at age 62, he, he dies. And you can kind of uh, break down much of uh, Muhammad's life in three stages. Uh, the first stage between 610 and 622 AD uh, was largely peaceful, as I said, and, and he was uh, tolerant. Uh, when his followings were uh, in a minority, uh, but in the uh, second stage, as his followers grow in numbers and uh, superiority, and he gets more confident and, and less meek um, between the years of 622 and 624 AD. And by the time we get to this third stage in uh, Medina, he grows even more confident and grows numerically and shows a gross intolerance to anyone who oppose him. Not a lot was written about Muhammad at the time. Um, his biography wasn't written until 200 years after his death. And he barely gets a mention in the Quran uh, by name, uh, whereas Jesus is named uh, on um, far more occasions. You see, writings about Jesus, uh, by comparison, appear about 15 to 60 years after his death and were written by eyewitnesses. In fact, nothing is known of Muhammad until the late 7th century, and his sayings weren't written down till the 9th century. What we do know about Muhammad are from writings uh, well after he lived, and by people who lived miles away and never actually even knew him. So we have to ask the question, why didn't Muhammad actually write things down at the time? And why it took so long after Muhammad's death to write anything down? Well, uh, could be because he was illiterate, uh, but a man of his power and wealth would have been able to afford a scribe to write things down for him. But perhaps he didn't think his revelations were that important and he often referred to them as demonic. He even claimed that the devil had tricked him and that he was unable to tell the difference between an angelic revelation and a demonic one. So, uh, if nothing was written down for centuries later, where did the scribes centuries later get their material from as stories would not have been recorded uh, but verbally handed down throughout the generations? Now, Compare that to writings about Jesus today, we have over 24,000 manuscripts about Jesus, where the earliest was dated back to 125 AD, and written by people who knew him, walked with him, and uh, talked with him. You compare that to the Quran, uh, today we only have six original Qurans, uh, which were written 200 years after Muhammad's death. So this begs the question, was Muhammad even a prophet? Um, so what is a prophet and what makes a prophet? Is it just a man with a long beard and a stick? Well, no, a little bit more to it than that. You see, um, prophets have visions from God, uh, which are verified by other prophets and confirmed by uh, previous prophet revelations. Um, <clears throat> there will be a prophetic line 
and that will confirm the um, prophecies before them. Uh, you see, Jesus' life in his coming and his death um, was prophesied many times in the Old Testament, centuries before his arrival. Um, so therefore, his importance to the world and his benefit to the mankind uh, is demonstrated by these predictions of, of his arrival by many previous prophets. Uh, unlike in Muhammad, where uh, nobody saw him coming, did they? Um, prophets are raised up as men of God, and, and some also perform miracles uh, as a sign that they were from God. Uh, these would be witnessed by many to prove their authenticity. And um, to help determine a true prophet is to, is to measure the accuracy of their predictions and how they urge people to return to God. Uh, Muhammad failed to convince the local Jewish tribes at Medina um, and uh, when he couldn't even name his God. So they rejected him as, as, a, as a prophet and uh, thus helped seal their fate. He did even, at one point, try to humble himself, uh, maybe to worm his way into the Jewish tribe's affections uh, by claiming that he was not a prophet and he was just nothing more than a messenger. In uh, Surah uh, 46.9, we read this, uh, I'm not something original among the messengers, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. I only follow what which is revealed to me, and I'm not a clear warner. Several times, Muhammad will climb to the top of a mountain to throw himself off whilst depressed. This is described in um, Sahir al Bukhari 6982, uh, where it's, um, we hear that uh, it's, he's depressed over the uh, death of Khadija's cousin. Um, but fortunately, uh, it will be stopped each time by uh, Jibril, remember him, and he'll return home. Now, nowhere in the Bible uh, is there any mention of Jesus uh, or indeed any of the prophets uh, being suicidal. Um, knowing his imminent death was fast approaching, Jesus would retire to a garden uh, to pray. Uh, where he was so stressed that he sweated blood, but he wasn't suicidal. There are accounts of Muhammad's depression and suicidal uh, attempts by leaping off a cliff, um, but it's not recorded as to why exactly he tried to do this. So it's hard to take Muhammad's claim seriously, and uh, we are told to be aware of uh, false prophets, uh, who would speak from their own imagination uh, and not from the mouth of God. When God has a word for the world, he makes that word clear and gives authority to the person delivering it. Now, often the prophets of the Old Testament would deliver their message with the words, thus said the Lord. Now, this is to underline its authority and its divine origin. See, Jews and the Christians, they struggle to recognize Muhammad's prophecy claims and his supposed authority as someone who knew the Lord. Um, God always reveals himself through his prophets, who were all men of righteousness and would be clear about the name of God who had sent them. But Muhammad failed on both these points. Many doubts about Muhammad's authenticity remain unanswered today. Uh, fearsome warrior he was, but claims of him being a prophet, well, I just don't buy that. Um, so when Muhammad received his revelations, according to Islamic text, curious things were recorded as to what would happen to him. And no biblical prophet has been described as receiving God's word in this manner. So what would happen to him when he got his revelations? Well, uh, he would uh, suffer a hard and severe condition and hear the ringing of bells in his ears. He would faint and fall. He would sweat even on a cold day. Uh, his face would go red and he would breathe heavily. He would snort like a camel. Uh, his mouth and lips would quiver. Uh, he would uh, hallucinate, uh, so said Aisha. It says that uh, magic was worked on the prophet so that he began to fancy or imagine 
uh, that he was doing a thing which he was not actually doing. Um, yeah, uh, prophesying, that's what he wasn't doing. A question always worth asking Muslims is why the Almighty Allah chose someone who could not read or write to reveal what is supposed to be his final and most important revelation. The question is usually met either by a vague response of there being a miracle somewhere down the line that allowed the Quran to be revealed, or it's met with silence. You see, out of all the people in the world at that time, surely Mighty Allah could find someone who wasn't an uneducated barbarian. He was a very wealthy, illiterate man, but couldn't see the importance of his revelations enough to afford a scribe to write down this important word of God. Now, did God therefore feel that he made a mistake giving us the Bible and was allowing his son to die on the cross for our sins, not even enough for mankind? And did God feel there was more he wanted to reveal to the world by revealing it to Muhammad? Why did God then tell us in the Quran to believe in the Bible when it contradicts what is in the Quran? And we read this and recite, O Muhammad, what has been revealed to you by the book of your Lord. There is no changer of his words and never will you find in another than a refuge. That's from Surah 1827. To reveal what is claimed to be the last of God's revelations, it is also curious that he chose to reveal it to someone not in the prophetic line and in a language that was in its infancy and had to be developed over the following centuries to accommodate the text. You see, at the time of Muhammad, uh, Arabic was not an established tongue uh, such as we see today. And even today, only a small number of people speak and understand this only language that the Quran is supposed to be read in. So for such an important message, he could have chosen a more established form of communication, um, such as Greek or Hebrew. Uh, these were widely spoken languages uh, that would have been used in and around Arabia at the time. When comparing Muhammad with Jesus, Muhammad just doesn't even come close. He's supposed to be the man who Muslims claim to be the replacement for Jesus. Uh, but when comparing the two pedigrees and qualities, Muhammad is found wanting big time. Muslims would like to tell you that Muhammad was a caring man and uh, became a perfect role model for them to how to live their life. Uh, but they, they won't tell you his uh, brutal, ugly side of him. Uh, they like to gloss over and conveniently ignore well, for example, uh, he is married to a six-year-old girl, um, a marriage which was consummated when she was just nine. And, you know, contrasting differently, really, between the, the, the first, uh, an older matriarchal wife of Khadija, who was um, aged 45 and, and, and 25 years his, his senior. Um, we read this in Sahir al-Bukhari uh, 3896, uh, narrated by um, uh, Hisham's father. Uh, Khadija died three years before the Prophet departed to al-Medina. Uh, he stayed there for two years or so, and then he wrote the marriage contract with uh, Aisha. Uh, when she was a girl of six years age, and uh, he consummated that marriage when she was just nine years old. And Aisha herself confirms her age uh, in the following uh, uh, Sahih Muslim uh, 3310, uh, where she says that uh, uh, Allah's uh, apostle married me when I was six years old and I was admitted to his house when uh, nine years old. Muslims are aware of Jesus' superiority to Muhammad, but still only bring Jesus down to the same level of prophet uh, and not of God. Uh, Muslims know that Jesus was born of a virgin, 
and that Mohammed had no such immaculate conception and was born of normal parentage and um, was conceived just naturally. Jesus was a well-known um, then and now for his um, performance of miracles, healing the sick, uh, the deaf and the, uh, and the blind, uh, and even raising the dead. So Jesus' miracles were well documented and, and witnessed by thousands. This in part made him popular with the uh, people and uh, hated by the Jewish authorities. Mohammed, though, uh, was clearly no prophet as he performed no miracles uh, that were witnessed and instead of healing and preserving life would instead uh, maim and kill and as I said earlier he was even suicidal. So uh, Jesus was a, a forgiver of sin and would actively seek out the sinner to free them from that bondage. Um, it is through Jesus' forgiveness of our sin that ensures our salvation. Now Muhammad would use corporal punishment and uh, a sentence of death for all those who did wrong and indeed was a sinner himself. Um, Jesus being sinless, uh, we see he would have forgiven Muhammad. Uh, he felt like he repented, but maybe he did. So today all Muslims uh, know that Jesus is alive and Muhammad is dead and buried. Well, just a thought there um, that I shall leave you with. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this episode, Muhammad. Uh, in the next episode, I will be exploring more truths of Islam and the treatment of women. And we'll be looking at um, the um, uh, Muhammad's wives. So please subscribe to uh, the, the channel on YouTube for uh, some more surprising truths of Islam that just you won't get from the mainstream media. And you'll hear it first on this channel. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll say bye for now.